With all the recent developments and hype around staking, liquid staking, LSDs and more, you might be thinking, great, I'll just stake all of my ETH and max out the yield bearing potential of my assets by restaking them. And until last week, very few people would have even batted an eye against this sentiment. Enter Vitalik Buterin's admission that he only stakes a small portion of his ETH. So why would Buterin himself be wary of staking on Ethereum and what does he recommend instead? Defend your crypto from market crashes and downside volatility with Bumper. More on them later. In a panel last week, Buterin ruffled quite a few feathers when he said the following. Probably the biggest reason why I personally am not like just staking all of my ETH and I'm instead like staking a fairly small portion is uh, because if you stake your ETH, it has to be on uh, like the keys that access it have to be public on uh, some uh, system that's online. And like for safety, it has to be a multi-sig and multi-sigs for staking are still fairly, fairly difficult to set up. So Vitalik gives two main reasons here for not staking all or even a majority of his ETH. The first is actually rather simple. Buterin thinks that because once you stake your tokens, the keys which access these assets are in some form or other accessible via the internet, that this poses an added security risk. And he's right. The second reason he gives is where things get a little stickier. He explains that setting up a personal multi-sig for staking can be a difficult process, with the complications posing challenges. Now to quickly recap, a multi-sig is essentially a security mechanism that requires multiple verified signatories to authorize a decision or a transaction. Think of old Hollywood movies where two evil looking generals have to insert and turn their personal keys at the same time to launch some world end weapon, except with multi-sigs for staking, the signatories are collectively deciding whether or not to stake a certain number of tokens. Now conceptually this is ideal because it prevents a lone malicious actor from accessing or transferring funds that don't belong to them. In practice however, Vitalik and other panel members warn us of the potential centralization risks of protocols like Eigenlayer which allows Ethereum validators or stakers to restake their Ether on other networks. And before we see how the DeFi world has responded, a quick word from Bumper. So here's something new. Bumper your assets to defend them from price drops without losing upside exposure. You set a price floor and term length, then lock your tokens into the protocol. When your term ends, if the price has fallen under your floor, you leave with stable coins at the floor's value. Otherwise, you just take back your original asset. Bumper is going live in August, and it's one of the most innovative DeFi protocols for hedging being built right now. So check out bumper.fi, there's links in the description of this video. Now back to our story. Judging by the reactions to the panel discussion, people are confused by Vitalik's apparent change in sentiment. Others were more direct, and one member of the audience said they're sour for being lied to by Vitalik, who knew of the security flaw but kept it from the community. Now in fairness to Vitalik, it's worth noting that his comments followed a blog post from June 9th in which he identified three technical transitions which are crucial to Ethereum's success and indeed failure. One, sufficient scaling infrastructure. Two, wallet security and three, privacy preserving features. He also mentioned that the move to smart contract wallets could pose issues due to the complexities arising when users control multiple addresses concurrently. Buterin's comments also drew criticism from Charles Hoskinson, Ethereum co-founder and founder of the Cardano blockchain. Hoskinson expressed his surprise on Twitter, noting that he stakes all of his Cardano and believes that that's how a properly designed proof of stake protocol should work. So where do you stand? Does Vitalik's revelation that he only stakes a small portion of his ETH influence your opinion on staking or the safety of your staked assets? Let us know in the comments and as always, stay defiant.